Hello, wonderful leaders, and welcome. We are here today for a lesson on vision. Finding your vision, making a big wish or a big dream come true, and having the impact that you want in this world. When you look at the soul work of being a leader, it can be divided into purpose, values, and vision. I think about values as the who you are as a leader. It's the who. It's how you show up, what's most important to you, and the core part of your identity. Purpose is your why. It's why it is that you do what you do. It's the motivation, the passion behind all of the work. It's the calling that you feel drawing you forward in life. Vision is the what. It is what you wish to accomplish, how it is that you wish to do it. It's your goals and dreams and wishes. Those three together, purpose, values, and vision, it's the who, why, and what of who you are as a leader. And those things together work towards making you the leader that you are. The reason that vision is so important and is such a part of that leadership quality is because it's a human need. Accomplishment and achievement is a basic human need of all people. And it's a key part of flourishing. Martin Seligman has a whole lot of work on this. And flourishing includes a huge leaning in towards accomplishing something, to having an impact and leaving a mark, and doing something that lasts in the world. I think of accomplishment as really making a mark on the world that leaves it or other people better than you find them. Perhaps it's even leaving a mark on yourself that leaves you better than you started. Accomplishment is doing something that changes the world, that changes your reality, the people around you, and how you can move forward. Vision can be big or it can be small. Big, huge visions are like Martin Luther King's, I have a dream. Whereas an intimate one might be, I have a vision for how to make my family better than the family I grew up in. It could be huge or it could be little and very intimate, but little doesn't mean that's no less important. It could be the most important thing to you and that is just as valuable. The other part is that visions can be professional or they can be personal. So it could be, how do I create a real thriving team at my organization? Or it could be something really personal, like I want to hike the Pacific Crest Trail from end to end. And either way, again, there's no good or bad or right or wrong. Your vision is your vision. And you can also look long term or short term. There are long term visions that will take a lifetime to accomplish. Martin Luther King's vision, for instance, or they can be really short term and something that you want to achieve in the next week. Whatever the case, it's just important to have something, have a vision, have something that you wish to achieve and to go for it. So this video is going to show you how. The framework that I want to offer you is called WOOP, W-O-O-P. It is a science-backed, research-proven strategy for breaking down vision and taking it from a wish to something that's achievable. The W-O-O-P stands for Wish, Outcome, Obstacle, and Plan. And we'll walk through each one of them. Before we begin, I want you to come up with your wish. What is your vision? What is it that you want to accomplish? Again, big or small, professional, personal, long-term, short-term, totally up to you. Take a moment and pause the video if you need to in order to think about that now. Got your wish? Great. I'm going to use an example wish to walk you through this exercise. And let's talk about the wish of having a really powerful, trusting, supportive team that's moving forward together as the wish. That's a pretty big one. It's definitely a professional one, and it's more of a long-term one. That's the example that I'm going to use. You have your own, okay? So I want you to have your own as you go. The first thing is to think about why is it that you want this wish at all? So for your wish, I want you to consider what is it that is so important about this? Why does this wish get prioritized to be your goal for this time period? 
One way to do that is to think about the difference between if this wish happened versus if you stuck with the status quo. So if I stuck with the status quo, if I stuck with the default of how things are now, what would be the difference? So let's say I stick with doing things just the way they are and I don't have as powerful a team as I want and they're not moving forward together towards the vision that I want. What would be the benefits, the pros and the cons of that situation? So I want you to think, if I just stuck with where I am, what's the pros and the cons? It's a lot easier not to rock the boat. Things are kind of moving around as they are. People are really overwhelmed right now, so adding another thing might feel really daunting and really in exhausting. There are some reasons, there are some arguments to stick with the status quo, but there's also huge costs. We are not gonna be as effective as a team unless we actually take some steps to try to improve the way that we communicate, improve the way that we work together, improve the cohesiveness of the vision that we seek. So perhaps there are prizes that are worth moving for. So when you're crafting your wish, I want to encourage you to look at what are the pros and cons of sticking with the status quo? Why even change? In order to complete the W part of this pro the WOOP process, you want to summarize your wish in a single sentence that's positively worded, a bit aspirational, exciting, challenging, but not so scary that it's terrifying. The reason that you want to do this is because you want to keep it as a goal that is out there that you're really excited about. And to have it as a single sentence will help you remember it and keep it forefront of your mind. Keep it as the most important thing. If you have a very long-winded goal, just like you've often seen very long-winded mission statements, it's hard to remember. And when things are hard to remember, they're hard to keep in mind and it's hard to keep it as the most important thing, the thing that you're working towards. Instead, if you have a single sentence that is very exciting and aspirational, that's the one that's going to stick. Keep that sentence nice and short. Let me give you a couple examples. My clients tend to have some really big, amazing wishes. One of my favorites was one woman who wanted to live, love, and lead wholeheartedly. That was her aspiration. Another one of my clients wants to turn up the volume. She wants to get louder and bigger and more present in the world. Another one really wants to change her health habits. And so she wants to let her feet take her to places near and far that make her heart healthy and happy. And so those are some really interesting, aspirational, catchy wishes that some of my clients have. What's your wish? Take a moment, if you can, go ahead and pause the video if you want, to write down a couple ways of rephrasing your wish in a way that's a single sentence, aspirational, and memorable. Keep it memorable for you. It doesn't have to make any sense to anyone else. Make sure that it makes sense for you. Excellent. Now we're gonna go on to the outcome. This part is really dreaming. It's really painting a picture in your mind of the outcome you want to achieve. And it doesn't mean that this is the only possible outcome that's going to happen. Obviously, things change along the road and things don't necessarily look the way that we pictured it when we finish. But it is important to take the time to paint that picture of what it is that you really want to happen, to imagine what it's going to look like, feel like, and be like when you end. And I think that the feel like, be like, and look like are the important things. So it's very common to picture the outcome, right? You envision the outcome. So in our example, I'm envisioning that the team is closer, that we have a common vision statement that all of us are working towards, that each person is kind of working on their aspect of it in their own way, doing the things that they're really passionate about, but that we come together regularly. 
every week perhaps, sometimes more, sometimes less, in order to really share and keep that vision moving forward and keep those benchmarks in place. That's my vision. What's yours? I have a look, a picture in my mind of what that's going to look like. I can even picture the meeting room in which a lot of this work is going to happen. For you, it's going to have a very different picture, but picture it. Create the image in your mind of what it is that you want to achieve. But there's other parts of that visioning, which include how does it feel and who are you going to be at the end? The feeling part is the emotions that will come about when the outcome is achieved. For my example, the emotions are going to be a feeling of teamwork, of connectedness, of belonging, of all contributing to doing something bigger than any one of us could do alone. That to me is a powerful feeling, but knowing what that feeling is for you is going to really help you keep the momentum going in this process. If you can feel the outcome and feel the outcome you want in your body, in your emotions, in your heart, that's going to have a huge impact in continuing to keep you moving forward. And that last part, the being part, who will you be? What are you going to be that's different than you are now if you can achieve this outcome? So for me, I'm going to be a more powerful leader if I can pull a team together. If I can do that work, it'll make me more of a servant leader, more of a team leader, more of less of the head and more of like the arms that surround and embrace everyone and the encouragement behind. So that's the kind of being, that's the leader I want to be. Who is it that you will be if you can achieve your wish? So in your outcome, remember, visualize it. So what does it look like? I want you to feel it in your emotions. What does that feel like? And think about how you will change as a human being. What skills will you learn? And who will you be at the end? That's the outcome part. The next O in WHOOP stands for obstacle. What's in the way? What are the roadblocks outside and internally that are getting in the way of you achieving your wish? And every wish is going to have its obstacles. Some that we know ahead of time and some that just come up in the course of life. So take a moment to think about what are the external and internal obstacles that are going to get in your way. I promise that a lot of the upcoming videos are going to help you with the internal obstacles. We're going to have a whole video. The next one that's coming up is going to be about mindset and how we get in our own way. And later on in the body part, we're going to be thinking about how our emotions get in our way. Things like fear and anxiety and anger. How do those emotions get in our way? But you can still right now name a lot of those, I'm sure. For many of us, there's a big feeling of imposter syndrome that I'm taking on something that's bigger than I can manage, or maybe that I'm not good enough, or that I don't have the skills enough to take on this challenge. That's some of the internal things. You can also think about what are the external things? What are the external obstacles? People and environmental changes and legislative demands from the top or pressures from your boss. Those are going to be obstacles. There's going to be things outside of you that are going to be obstacles in the way. What are those? Name them. And so we come to the final part of WHOOP, plan. If there's an obstacle, what is your plan? The idea here isn't necessarily to make a plan to get you to the end post. We now recognize that that kind of planning where you have a plan from start to finish is really, really difficult in times of great uncertainty and times of great change, which is kind of the reality of the world nowadays. I know that well before the pandemic, I was one of those people who always wanted to have a clear plan from start to finish. And if I 
couldn't use my plan A, I would have a plan B, C, and D. I always felt a little bit uncertain unless I had a roadmap. In the case of WHOOP, the way that they suggest making a plan isn't to have a clear and final roadmap that you follow from all the way from start to finish. That is helpful and useful, and I encourage you to have one if you wish. But the most important part of the WOOP process is to make a plan to overcome the obstacles that you can foresee, as well as the ones that you may not be able to foresee. In the obstacle portion, you looked at some of the external and internal obstacles that you might face. If you come across one of those obstacles, what is your plan to overcome that? In some ways, it's kind of like you have a plan for where you want to go. You know that along the way, you're going to come to the certain crossroads where there's going to be a challenge. What do you do to get around that challenge? How will you overcome those internal things? Say, I have got a little bit of imposter syndrome going on. How will I overcome that? Or if you know that there's going to be some external challenges, like a boss who may not buy in, what is the plan to overcome that? It's really about overcoming obstacles one by one and knowing how to flow around them when you get to them. It's the idea of, I've always been able to overcome challenges in the past. What are the tools and resources that I have in my backpack that will allow me to move forward? So that is the part of planning. And I strongly encourage you to think about planning that way. It's more of a step-by-step -step idea rather than a start to finish idea. And that really helps with navigating uncertainty and change because change is going to happen. Things are going to blow up. Never, not everything is always gonna go according to plan. And trying to force it to be that way is not useful. Instead, keep a bit of a flexibility in navigating your plan. Go ahead and have your roadmap, but in particular, know how you're going to navigate the obstacles that you already can foresee along the path. And know what's in your backpack. What are the tools and resources that you have available to you? What are your strengths? What are the resources of your team? So that when those challenges come up, you can navigate them. So that's WHOOP. Having a wish, an outcome, knowing the obstacles, and having a plan. So take this vision, this wish of yours, and add that to that identity part, the soul part of your leadership. And see if having a WHOOP process for each of your visions helps you navigate forward. Today and for this section, your discussion question is to share your whoop. Share your wish, your outcome, obstacle, and plan with all of us. And for your experiment, go through the process. I have a worksheet down below for you to download that will allow you to walk it through in a way. There's also all of the resources on the whoop site itself, which is called whoop your life. If you have any questions, always add those over to the discussion area. I'm happy to answer or bring it to the next integration session. Thank you so much, wonderful leaders. Take care.